Hello everyone, and welcome to another Fallout 76 build. It's been a little while since I've done one of these, but I decided to start up a new character last double XP weekend, and try approaching the game from a different direction. Today I'll be presenting my first Fallout 76 Merchant build, a character focused more on making caps than slaying enemies. The special for this build is 14 Strength, Perception 1, Endurance 1, Charisma 15, Intelligence 5, Agility 1, and Luck 2. I got this build up to level 32, so there's still plenty of room to invest more points, but, as you can see, the two most important stats for me were Strength and Charisma. This helps you carry the most items and get the best price for them. Maxed out Charisma means you can share any perk card, and also apparently receive 75% more caps and experience from group quests, making this character ideal for supporting your friends with. With the perks for this build, they're mostly going to be groups of cards which give similar bonuses to the character. For example, our first perks to look at are Strongback, Travelling Pharmacy, Bandolier, and Packrat. All of these perks help with carry capacity in one form or another, be it raising base carry weight, or reducing the weight of a specific type of item. You want to be able to carry as much as possible, as each item you carry has potential value. I'd personally rate Bandolier as the most important of these perks, as ammo is not only useful for yourself, but is also an easy seller at player vending, giving it dual purpose. With Bandolier maxed, all ballistic ammo weighs 90% less, meaning you can carry thousands of bullets without it weighing you down. In Perception, I had the Green Thumb perk card. This doubles the quantity of ingredients you receive when harvesting plants. There are plenty of valuable items that can be crafted in this game, and most require specific plants as ingredients. This perk then essentially doubles your overall yield, doubling the potential money you'll make. On to Charisma now, where there's a ton of room for perk cards. First up is Lone Wanderer or Inspirational. If you've not got any teammates, then Lone Wanderer is the perfect perk card, making you significantly harder to kill. If on a team though, then the bonus is lost, so I'd recommend switching over to Inspirational, which gives you an extra 5, 10 or 15% experience when in a team. Incredibly helpful for levelling, especially early on. Personally, I ended up with both of these equipped, as I just had so many Charisma points. Additionally though, I did have the Field Surgeon perk card, which makes Stimpaks and Radaway take effect much quicker. Fast healing is helpful in a close fight, but shouldn't be relied upon too heavily. If you need to heal or remove rads, do it ASAP. The key perk in Charisma is Hard Bargain, significantly improving prices when bartering at vendors. This is the key perk for this build, for obvious reasons. I'd recommend maxing this out early on to ensure you're making as much money as possible from the very first time you interact with a vendor bot. Sadly, I didn't really get to a high enough level to make full use of all the future Charisma perks, but I do want to go over some more choices you might want to consider. Magnetic Personality and Party Boy can both help further with bartering, by improving your charisma further, whilst cards like Philanthropist and Team Medic provide useful little bonuses for your teammates. For more combat-oriented perks, Suppressor and Tenderizer are obvious choices, as it reduces the damage output of your enemies and increases the damage they take when you hit them, meaning that you don't even need to be the main damage dealer to still contribute significantly to combat. Play around with the different combinations of Charisma perks as you play, in order to get a feel for them, and see what works best for you. The Intelligence perks I went with for this build were First Aid, Pharmacist, and Gunsmith. First Aid and Pharmacist make Stimpaks and Radaway stronger, meaning you'll need to use less on yourself, thereby having more available to sell. As for Gunsmith, this pulls double duty. First up, it will reduce wear and tear on your firearms, reducing how often you need to repair them. Secondly, it allows for full modding options with guns, not only allowing you to make your own guns as deadly as can be, but also meaning you can hire out your services to other players, who may not have wanted to invest in crafting perks. Charge a small fee to players, and make some caps by modding their gear, or even crafting basic weapons that they're after. At agility, we have Fruit Hiker. This perk reduces weight of all food and drink items. This really takes the same role as our strength perks, we want as much carry weight as possible, so reducing item weight is always going to be beneficial to us. Finally, we move on to Luck, where I've gone with Scrounger and Farmer Farmer. 
These perks will allow you to search ammo and chem containers respectively. Ammo is great for player vending, and chems are perfect to sell to vend bots, meaning both of these perks can go a long way to earning you more caps. Just make sure to hit that search button when looting, and see how many more items you get. On to our next section, Equipment, where I start with the weapons. Here the focus was on crafting weapons that were efficient, powerful, and, most importantly, actually possible to acquire early on. No junkies explosive handmade rifles or bloodied power attack damage deathclaw gauntlets here. This is a fairly low level merchant build, so instead we're looking at a couple of realistic weapons, starting with the suppressed hardened pipe revolver. Pipe revolvers are relatively common early on, often found on the corpses of Scorched, so breaking them down regularly should mean you learn to craft plenty of mods. My two key recommendations for modding would be a hardened receiver and a suppressor. These mean you're dealing out maximum damage, but also staying quiet whilst doing so. Although not a stealth build per se, you still don't want to be drawing attention to yourself. You're a merchant after all, not some warrior looking for honour and glory. Our alternative weapon is a suppressed hardened piercing sniper rifle. Here we also have the suppressor and hardened receiver for the same reasons as the revolver. You should have more modding options with this weapon early on though, as hunting rifles are all over the place. I found that a medium scope is the best sight for the weapon. You want to be able to headshot enemies from a distance, but you don't also want ADS to be impossible at mid-range. The perforating magazine gives superior armour penetration, increasing the damage you'll be dealing to enemies, and helping ensure more one-shot kills. As for the barrel and stock, these are pretty flexible, and you should really just go for whatever looks best to you. For me, I wanted reasonable weapon condition whilst also having decent recoil. Everything else was just an added bonus. On to armor now, where you're really just going to be wearing whatever you can scavenge. Before level 30, I'd advise crafting yourself pieces of leather armor if you haven't chanced upon anything better. Once you get to 30 though, the costs start including ballistic fiber, making it harder to regularly craft and improve your gear, so the best bet will just be to wear whatever the wasteland provides. As for an outfit to wear over the top, I'd recommend going with any rare pieces of apparel you've been lucky enough to find. For me, this was a White Wolf Fedora I received as a reward from completing the encrypted event, and also a Hunter's Longcoat, the exceedingly rare outfit originally worn by Old Longfellow and now sold by the Travelling Responder Vendorbot. This item can be really difficult to get your hands on, so it's by no means an essential part of the character. Instead, you should really just be using your character to show off the fact that you're someone who has acquired rare items, and may have more for sale. As you can probably tell, this build has less of a focus on combat, more on bartering. This will never be a god build, but instead it is a build you might want to go for if you don't feel you need to be shredding Scorch Beasts every 5 seconds, and would rather play more of a supporting role, improving teammates, helping new players, and maybe even getting a bit into roleplaying. The main goal for this character really will be to make as much money as possible. For this reason, I'd recommend setting yourself a daily goal of clearing out the 1400 caps the vendors have, and also trying to make even more from your own camp vending machines. I also quite enjoyed making my camp with the express purpose of it being enticing to players, trying to get them in the front door and seeking out the items I had for sale. If you want to see what I went for with my early merchant's camp build, then I posted the video to it earlier this week and I'll make sure to leave it in the card section and description too. If you're wondering about what to sell at player vending and how you should price things, I can offer a little advice about that. For the entire duration of the game, junk and ammo will be worth selling. I tend to price mine at one cap per item, and it flies out of the shop most days. Make sure you're only selling what you don't need, and consider raising the price to two caps an item if you're selling faster than you can gather. If your stash box is particularly light, then you might want to raise item prices to get the most you can from each one. If you're closing in on the limit though, consider lowering prices, in order to have items sell quicker. This should help you keep a steady flow of caps coming in, without also resulting in overstock or empty shelves. Now, for the footwear tables, you have to make sure you snake them from left to right in size order, and then face my- oh god! <laughs> I've gone back into retail mode, please make it stop! Sorry about that, uh, <laughs> I, um, I used to work retail, and just writing up this script is giving me flashbacks. So, maybe it's time to take a break from reality and jump into this character's backstory.
All the money in the world is yours. Other people just happen to be holding it for you. Those were the words that his father would tell him time and time again. So much so that they became the mantra of a merchant decided to live by. As far as he was concerned, money was there for him, and his sole purpose was to keep it moving around. This might not seem that strange to your Santa pre-war American, but the merchant spent the vast majority of his life inside the vault. He couldn't remember what the outside world was even like, and only had his father's descriptions, most of which were focused around advertising billboards, storefronts and customer pathing diagrams. As executive sales and partnerships manager for West Virginia, his father was obsessed with sales and little else. He didn't adapt well to vault life, not really being able to grasp the fact that work was based more on survival than to satisfy sale targets or impress higher-ups. He knew that the overseer was effectively the CEO of Vault 76 though, so followed her orders no matter what. The merchant received a somewhat unusual upbringing from his father due to the slightly warped views on the world around him. His mother had been away on business when the bombs dropped, no doubt her death hadn't helped her father, and the merchant ended up growing up to be much like his father, obsessed with sales and capitalism as a whole. Fortunately, the merchant seemed to be naturally charismatic, a quality no doubt increased by his father's lessons on customer service. Words alone couldn't take you too far inside the vault though, so he also worked hard on his body, becoming an incredibly strong individual who proved his worth to the company by also engaging in physical activities. While the other vault dwellers were obsessing over how to rebuild America, his thoughts were focused more on how much he could sell building supplies for, if he could somehow create a need for planning permission, or maybe even rent out his own property as an additional sideline business. For over a quarter of a century, these ideas and many more circled his mind. Even after his father passed on, his mind stayed fixated on the idea of turning post-war America into his own store. When the doors open, he emerges into the wasteland with a glint in his eye and a smirk on his face. His fortune awaited him. Time to start making money. Thank you all for tuning in to this Fallout 76 build. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to hit 24,000 subscribers by mid-January, so I greatly appreciate everyone who subscribes. If you've already done that, then please share this video around with others in the Fallout 76 community. If you have any tips for making money in the wasteland, then leave them in the comments below. I'll be interested to see what techniques you all have to max out your caps. And before I fully sign off, I'd like to apologise for the fact I sound... not human at the moment. I don't know entirely why but hopefully I'm still breathing by the time this video comes out. As always, thanks for watching. Sarge out.